Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GFS and ECMWF ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run as well looking at precipitation and temperature. Now of course we've had a very stormy last couple of weeks and things are slowly settling down a little bit over the next, com uh, next few days. And then as we head into March, there could become some big uncertainties. It looks like those westerly winds we've had dominating the last couple of weeks are going to reduce in strength. And we could potentially see some more blocking come in. Uh, and we could even be going much colder indeed. And we've alluded to that over the last few videos. Uh, we'll have a look at what the models are showing today. Still there's a lot of spread. No certainty really within it at this stage. But there is the potential of seeing either cold, uh, just generally cold and frosty conditions, or even some proper cold northeasterly or easterly winds uh, still very much on the cards as we head into March. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we start off by having a look at the latest GFS run. You can see high pressure is actually over the top of the country into our far southeast. Um, so further northwards and westwards, there are a few showers pushing in and some gustier winds. But further southwards and eastwards, you go more towards the centre of the high. Pretty decent in that sunshine out there, 9, 10 degrees, maybe a little bit milder. And I'm feeling a little bit milder if you are in that sunshine. But it's going to mean that overnight temperatures will drop away with temperatures getting to around freezing uh, as they did last night and they will do over the next couple of evenings. Now if we do run through, you can see that high pressure does migrate away. And we temporarily see weather fronts trying to push in, but it's getting blocked out by this high pressure system. And eventually that high pressure does sort of die away and we see a weather front push in sort of by next Wednesday, Thursday time, bringing some rain and precipitation, a bit of cold air mass. But it's beyond that, as we head toward day 10, where the big uncertainty comes in. You can see the polar vortex over uh, the, the North Atlantic, northern hemisphere, um, with these sort of purples and blues, is starting to weaken. And it's starting to split up. And you can see this high pressure trying to hold on. And on this latest GFS run, it doesn't quite pull off those easterly winds that we were potentially seeing yesterday. But instead, what we see is a bit of blocking developed towards Greenland and over the North Pole. You see those uh, those darker blues are shifted elsewhere, not in a central core like they have been recently. And you see actually low pressure dives southwards. This could actually go quite stormy and unsettled, um, even with blocking. Um, and it would be really quite cold with generally the airflow coming in from the north. Look at those upper air temperatures. Not bitterly cold, but it would be chilly with very cold um, surface temperatures, uh, at least for the time of year, down to sort of mid-single digits, uh, maybe only four or five degrees. Now, the upper air temperatures don't look exceptional, but given the precipitation, and we're going to stay under those colder air masses or generally cooler air masses for quite a period of time, we could be pretty chilly under that. And you probably expect a bit of snowfall over higher ground. So very unsettled, but still with this general um, jet stream getting distorted, sent much further southwards. You see these low pressure centres all the way down to France, Spain and Portugal, instead of being towards um, Iceland and northern Scotland. So a bit of a different run from the GFS today, but still along the lines of a disruptive polar vortex coming up and potentially a bit of blocking. Now, if you have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. Very similar with the high pressure over the top and to our northeast. But we do see low pressure break through a little bit in around a week's time. And then right towards the end of the run, you see again this battle between low pressure coming diving in off the Atlantic and high pressure out to our east. And you can see generally you're sort of in between weather systems. I mean, it's difficult to say exactly what would happen from this. We could see that high pressure hold on and start to see a chilly, colder flow. Or we could see low pressure win out in from the west. But as we'll see with the ECWF in a minute, none of the runs have got a lot of consistency. So, um, yeah, it's difficult to say exactly what we're going to be seeing at this stage. But all, uh, all cards are still on the table. We could be going into busy cold easterly winds. Or we could stay with a westerly wind. Um, similar to that GFS run, even though that run was pretty chilly, uh, it was still generally a westerly flow. So so now if we do have a look at the ECM WF over on the Weather Outlook, for some reason Meteor Seal and West Central are not working with the ECM WF today. So we're on the Weather Outlook, um, and I must say the ECM WF run actually goes really quite cold. Now very similar, of course, over the next couple of days we do run through high pressure out to our east and to our north, and as we head towards seven days, you can see all those blues to our north start separating over towards Russia and out towards North America. At day 10, high pressure over towards Scandinavia, easterly winds. And if we do have a look 
at those upper air conditions, you can see the minus 10 line is just to our east, and we would be pulling in a bitterly cold easterly flow. Um, that would be very cold indeed if we did see this come off. Um, so it just shows you the three different runs we have today. GFS run, very much more of a westerly but chilly flow. GM run, a little bit in between, not really knowing low pressure or high pressure, in, 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 which knowing which is in control, really. And then the Eastern GF run, still going for a full-blown, bitterly cold, easterly wind. We'd give temperatures into the low single digits in the day, overnight temperatures well below freezing, and winter, wintry precipitation falling out of the sky for everyone if we did see this come off uh, for the first third of March. Very interesting seeing that today. Now, if we do have a look at the East NDF ensembles over on the Icelandic Met Office, now I haven't had a look at these for uh, a while, so they're very good in the long term. I have a look at general trends. We have, of course, been concentrating on the short term with the storms over the last couple of weeks. But if we do run through, you can see generally see, generally see at the moment high pressure to our east, low pressure to our west. Now, if we do go out to day seven, you see a bit of a mixed bag from all the ensemble members. Generally high pressure near or over the top of the UK, with low pressure trying to push in um, on all of these runs. Nothing crazy in terms of this, but uh, you can see the middle 20 might have probably more settled the other, uh, uh, either, either, either side of that with the ensembles. Probably more low pressure influence. Now, if we do run out to day 10, now you can see the big differences coming in. You can see 52.9% or 27 on the ensemble members, including the control and operational run of the midnight runs. Um, high pressure over Scandinavia, proper Scandi high, pulling in easterly winds. That would be a proper cold easterly wind. However, another 24 have that high pressure not really in control and a flat westerly with quite unsettled conditions pushing in from the west so big big differences and if we run out to 300 hours very similar 19 or 37.3 percent high pressure over top of scandinavia easterly wind 17 low pressure flat low pressure systems in from the west southwest another 10 have again quite a, a bit of blocking to our north this is what we'll probably be seeing with the gfs operation run low pressure with a uh, center over the top of the UK and to the south with the southerly tracking jet stream, chilly, but would still be really unsettled. And then another five with high pressure over the top, pulling in an easterly wind. And right towards the end of the run, very similar, just slightly different orientation of that. Another 19, high pressure towards Scandinavia would be trying to pull in an easterly wind, but low pressure trying to run it off the Atlantic. Another 17, just an Atlantic mess of low pressure. Another 10, another big uh, low pressure systems. Southerly tracked again with a bit of blocking over Greenland. And then another five big high pressure system towards Scandinavia would be pulling in very cold easterly winds. Very chilly from that indeed. So you can see big spread from around day seven to day ten and beyond. Very uncertain at this stage. And I'm sure we'll have a much better idea in the next few days. But don't uh, lose all hope if you're looking forward to some drier, colder conditions. But at the same time, it's not guaranteed by any means. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS and Eastern Drift ensembles from Weta Central, have a look at the temperatures at Angel of DHPA and precipitation. You can see generally well above average at the moment, and that's going to continue over the next sort of week or so. Around 4th, 5th of March, we see a much colder sector push in, and then the uncertainty comes in. Most ensemble members go cold, then quite a few return to average or slightly above average but we still have quite a few going much colder gfs has been very much more on the average to milder side of the on of the models uh, recently um and you can see quite a few are staying around average um, and suppose that's what we'd expect at sort of the day 10 time frame um as uh, it's very difficult to be getting any consistency really at that time frame Still quite a bit of precipitation, but not masses, so definitely some ensemble members going for more of a high pressure influence, and that's most likely to be because of that Scandinavian high, and some are going very cold down to that minus 10 level. Only maybe five ensemble members, but still enough uh, to keep the idea uh, within the ensemble runs. If we do have a look at the ECLUF ensembles on the other hand, you can see they are much colder in the longer term. Above average over the next seven days, pretty consistent with the GFS ensembles. ensembles. Then we see a much lower upper air conditions for London with a big drop in around the 4th, 5th of March. And then it stays quite chilly on quite a few of the ensemble runs, including the operational run. The operational run is, yes, in the lower half of the ensemble members, but it's by no means an outlier. Many going down to that minus 6 to minus 8 to minus 10 level. Um, and some going much colder than that, bringing in a real cold easily flowing. You can see the control run there, that thicker 
blue light going really cold proper sort of cold easterly spell there with the upper air temperature staying around minus five for a good five six days which would be cold Generally, though, the ensemble members sort of average around the 1981-2010 mean. But once again, we definitely do have that signal of potentially easterly winds. But it's by no means guaranteed at this stage. We'll have to keep an eye, of course, on what the models continue to show over the next couple of days. Uh, but definitely is a scope for various weather conditions over the next couple of weeks. There's not going to be a westerly fest at this stage. There's no massive signal for that. Um, but it is an option as well as misty cold easterly winds. So we'll have to keep an eye, of course, for that as we head into meteorological spring. So we now finally finish up, have a look at the UKMS office run, looking at precipitation and temperature. Not too much really is going to be happening over the next five days, as we'll see. You can see a bit of precipitation pushing into the west today, but again, nothing too crazy. It's going to fizzle out as it comes up against the higher pressure. Tomorrow, another weather front tries to push in. Rain again for western areas, and it does try and move in. For by Monday, we see a bigger area of low pressure move in, bringing heavier rain for all, but it does move through quite quickly. And by early hours of Tuesday, all areas are dry again. Wednesday, a reasonably dry day, another weather front pushing through, bringing some more patchy rain through Thursday. But of course, that's when there's that potential little low pressure system to move in, bringing more unsettled conditions for all. You can see that with an enhanced shower activity just behind this weather front. Now, if we do look at the max temperatures, it's going to be quite up and down. You see, earlier this morning, it was chilly in the north, but still generally mild in the south, 6, 7 degrees. But you can see it, temperatures did drop away in, um, drop away quite considerably by sunrise, around freezing. And today, temperatures rose to around 9 or 10 degrees um, in the south and around 5 to 7 degrees in the north. Of course, feeling another chilly night, widespread, uh, low, low, low single digits, maybe a frost for some. And tomorrow afternoon, temperatures widely again, 8 to 10 degrees, and maybe a bit colder further northwards, as usual. Through Sunday evening, temperatures going to drop away once again in the east, maybe 3, 4 degrees, but not quite as cold, with more cloud cover. And through Monday, you see temperatures quite mild in the south, 8, 9, 10 degrees, but a colder area, uh, or colder air mass moving through in the north, temperatures bring, bring those temperatures down a little bit. And through early hours of Tuesday, widely in the north and west, um, temperatures going to drop to around freezing, quite chilly indeed, in the far southeast, hovering in mid single digits. And Tuesday's going to be a pretty chilly day, um, not massively cold, but six to eight degrees widely, maybe an isolated nine or ten degrees in the far southeast. Early hours of Wednesday, widespread cold night um, to uh, for the second of March, uh, widely around freezing, maybe a few areas in the far south hovering just above freezing and towards the coast. And Wednesday's going to be, again, another chillier day, 7 to 9 degrees widely, a few areas colder than that. And then, of course, by Thursday, early hours, much colder in the north, but a little bit mild in the south as we do start to see weather fronts try and push in. So very much up and down with the temperatures over the next week or so. Um, to precipitation is going to be on and off, but no massive um, sort of uh, wet days, apart from maybe a little bit through Monday, um, and we'll keep an eye on that over the course of the next couple day, uh, or over the course of the next day or so. See exactly the timings on that, because again, with these systems that do move through in, in sort of six hours or so, if it starts raining at six, seven p.m., it won't affect too many people in their days. But if it starts raining at two, three p.m., again, it affects rush hour a little bit more, um, and more people will be affected by it. So. We'll keep an eye on that and we'll update that again tomorrow. But doesn't look too bad in the next five days. Very much up in the air as we head into March. But still the potential for seeing so much colder weather if you're looking forward to that. But at the same time, most likely scenario will probably be in between. A bit of uh, colder conditions with more high pressure, frosty conditions, maybe some snow potential. But also more precipitation moving in. But we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. As you saw by the operational runs today, there is still... Big, big uncertainty. Some going very unsettled. Others like the Eastern JF run bringing in easterly winds. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.